Previously, I made a video on webhooks that hit 100k views, and thank you for that. But I made a mistake in my example by using polling instead of proper webhook setup. So in this video, I'll fix that with simple corrected code examples. Plus, I'll walk you through practical applications of webhooks in AWS and GitHub, covering the entire flow in a way developers can easily relate to. So let's jump right in. A webhook is essentially a callback URL or endpoint that a service calls when a specific event occurs. This code here sets up a basic webhook listener using Express.js. It creates a server that listens for post request at the webhook endpoint. Whenever an external service triggers a webhook, it sends the event data as a post request to this endpoint. The server processes the incoming data and logs it, while also acknowledging received with a 200 OK response. It's a simple yet effective way to handle webhook events. Let's understand it better with a more practical example, where we sync code from a third-party Git repository to AWS using webhooks. It's an automated pipeline for deploying code changes from an external Git repository to AWS, leveraging AWS API Gateway, Lambda, CodeBuild, and S3 for managing artifacts and sensitive data. In this case, GitHub is the server, pushing event notifications. Your application, for example, API Gateway, Lambda, etc., is the client receiving and processing those events. Let's assume we are using GitHub as a third-party Git repository. We'll configure a webhook in the GitHub to send a post request to an AWS API Gateway endpoint when code is pushed to a specific branch. And this is where we provide GitHub with the callback URL, for example, the AWS API Gateway endpoint, and the events to listen for. For example, a code push or pull request. After the configuration, GitHub acts as the client. When the specified event occurs, for example, a code is being pushed, GitHub sends the event data as a post request to the provided URL, which is the server. So when a push event occurs, GitHub sends a payload like this to Amazon API Gateway. In fact, GitHub has dual roles of both server and client. GitHub acts as a server because it generates and provides the data, such as this webhook payload, based on events happening in the system. In the bigger picture, GitHub is the authoritative source, the server of repository events. Now, GitHub also acts as a client when it sends a webhook, a post request to the specified endpoint. That is the receiving endpoint, for example, API Gateway in our case. And so, API Gateway is the server in that interaction. So you may think of GitHub as a messenger who needs to be told what events to watch for. For example, let me know when a code is pushed and where to deliver the message. For example, send the details to this API gateway endpoint. Configuring the webhook in GitHub is like giving this messenger their instructions. Once configured, GitHub becomes the client that sends the message or the event payload to the specified server, which is API gateway in this case. Amazon API Gateway serves as the entry point for the webhook events from the Git repository. It captures incoming requests and forwards them to AWS for processing. So, if you go back to our previous example using Express, in the case of AWS API Gateway, it would replace the app.post webhook functionality in this code. API Gateway would listen for the webhook just like this Express server does and then forward the request, for example, to a Lambda function or another service. In our case, API Gateway will invoke the Lambda function with a webhook payload. Lambda function is triggered by the API Gateway when it receives a webhook event. The Lambda function will process the incoming webhook event and can take actions like copying code to S3, starting a code build job, or logging the event. Here is a basic example of a Lambda function that logs the incoming payload and saves it to S3. In this example, the Lambda function passes the JSON payload, extracting information such as the repository name, pusher's name, commit ID, and commit message. It then creates a JSON file summarizing the push event and uploads it to an S3 bucket, which is specified in the environment variable S3 bucket. And depending on the setup, code build might be used to compile the code, run test, or transform files before storing them to S3. Code build could also be omitted if the workflow involves directly syncing files from Git to S3 without any modifications. Now, S3 output bucket stores the code or artifacts pushed from the Git repository. And S3 SSH key bucket holds the SSH keys or the other credentials if needed to authenticate with the Git repository. 
especially if the repository requires SSH based connection. Julius KMS key is used to securely manage encryption keys for any sensitive data, ensuring secure storage of SSH keys and other credentials. So to summarize this flow, a code is being pushed in Git repository triggers a webhook event. The event is sent to API Gateway, which forwards it to AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda function processes the webhook event, optionally triggering code build to prepare or modify the code. And the final code or artifacts are stored in the S3 output bucket, making the repository's latest state available in S3. The setup enables Git to S3 synchronization of code push events using webhooks, AWS Lambda, and S3 a pattern useful in CI-CD workflows for notifications, logging, or triggering additional build processes. Webhooks indeed act as a lightweight real-time communication method between servers, allowing applications to stay in sync without the need for manual polling or periodic checks. They are especially useful in event-driven architectures where immediate data updates are crucial. And if you haven't, do check out my full video on event-driven architectures.